Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to the last um, lecture of this class. And let me recall what we did last time. Last time we constructed the Adam spectral sequence. So the Adam spectral sequence is if you have a spectrum such that you have this technical hypothesis, which as I said, is not really necessary. It's necessary because we're working with cohomology rather than homology, but you can, you can sort of remove it. Uh, then there is a spectral sequence like this, and it converges conditionally to this term, which remember means that all these Lim and Lim1 terms in the exact couple are zero. If Y is connective and it connect, converges strongly, which I didn't tell you what it means, but it means uh, uh, essentially that you can reconstruct this term out of, of the infinity page in some sense uh, when X is finite. In particular, uh, when X is finite, these, uh, this associated graded identification of the Adams filtration here is exactly the infinity page. It's convert converted strongly in particular has that, you know, the short exact sequence that I, I wrote last time. You can identify this, this thing. Modulo fs plus one with um, the uh, e infinity page, yeah. which was a sub quotient of this guy. Okay, but maybe someone complained that it was a bit too abstract, and that very strongly says something more than that. But you know, just to give you part of. And someone said this is too abstract, so let me be a bit more concrete. Let's see how we can <clears throat> find. Uh, so suppose we have a map f from x to y, say. Um, you can replace, suppose y is p-complete, so we don't have these issues since it doesn't change the cohomology anyway. So you have a map from x to y, and suppose it's in Adam's filtration S. This means the class of F in F of S mod Fs plus one leaves in a sub quotient out. Uh, oh, sorry, I, I wrote home, but of course that was wrong. This is X. I mean, S and T have to appear on the left hand side. Uh, otherwise, we have problems. Um, sorry, it lies in a sub quotient of x. Say, I suppose this was well. Okay, s zero, no uh, s s uh, two. Right, and I want to tell you a recipe to get an element of e s s two out of this f. Of course, this element is not going to be uniquely determined because it's determined only up to boundaries. Uh, but okay, let's do the case first zero, s equals zero. So we have any map. I mean, remember, Adam's filtration zero just means any map, no condition. Um, so we need to give a class in home h upper star y h upper star a. Uh, you can actually recover these from the description I gave you of the spectral sequence last time, but there is an obvious uh, guess. So you have a map f from x to y, and you want a map from h upper star y to h upper star x. So what would you choose? And here there are no boundaries, so this is actually canonically. Uh, there are no boundaries for degree reasons, so this is actually canonically chosen. And of course, it, this is just H upper star F. So yeah, if you have uh, a map uh, in uh, in degree, I mean, if you have a map, you get uh, um, you can read out what happens on the on the zero Adams filtration. 
and the permanent cycles here are exactly those maps in cohomology that come from maps of spectrum. So, okay, let's go in Adams filtration one. So we have F from X to Y such that H upper star F is zero. We need to give an element of uh, x to one, one, h upper star y, h upper star x, i.e., if you remember what x is, uh, the isomorphism class of an extension. And I hope I don't screw the degrees here. Um, so this is h upper star x shifted by one. Some mystery extension here, h upper star y. And again, here for degree reasons, there cannot be any boundaries. So this class is well-defined. And so not everything is a permanent cycle. So not every extension is going to be represented indeed. And indeed, the way you do it, you put here the ISO class of the cone of F. And why is this a short exact sequence? Well, you look at the long exact sequence in cohomology for F, you see that you get um, H upper star um, Damn it, am I doing it wrong? No, this should be right. Um, no, 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 that's right. Okay, good. H upper star the cone of F and H upper star minus one, I think, X. Uh, H upper star minus one, Y, right? Uh, but these maps are the zero maps by hypothesis, by the fact that F flies in, uh, in um, Adam's filtration one. So this term gives you exactly the Adams filtration, yeah. the, 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 the class, the Adams class of this map. Okay, so that's fairly straightforward. It is sometimes called the E invariant for E for extension, but it's just the, the Adams class. And if Pavel has done, he told me that he did the Adams invariant, the help invariant one problem using K theory, you have seen something very similar. This is just an extension group of uh, using KU homo cohomology instead. And that's a similar story, building some kind of Adams spectral sequence using KU instead of HFP. But I'll stick with HFP for the moment. So let's do look now for a general S. Now we don't expect to find a canonical choice of, of representative now because, uh, well, we, we, we don't, but uh, so remember, we can choose this guy as a factorization. Of S maps with H upper star Fi is zero. We can choose such a factorization. And this is in fact the choice we're going to make. Different factorizations will give us different classes that will depend on, on the boundary, on a boundary. Differ by a boundary. Then as before, we can get stuff like uh, these. Zi, cone of Fi, minus one Zi, 
minus one, I believe. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Oh, that's I minus one. Sorry. Okay, using the same trick as before. And now you can splice them together and you can get, um, um, well, not too long exact sequence. F S, I think you need C, uh, oof, sorry. C, F, S minus one, you need to shift by one until you get to C, F, zero, which point you have shifted by S minus one. And you get X shifted by S. You get such a complex. And it is known that such a complex represents a class in X S S. This is a sort of higher version of this description of X1 as extensions. F X. Am I doing this right? I think I'm screwing up the directions at some point. Oh yeah, <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm so, so sorry. Uh, Okay, now it's correct. Um, so sorry, uh, keeping the directions right is, is tricky. Uh. Okay. Um, and now, yeah, now, now, now so it leaves, the, the extension leaves in exactly the, the right group. Um, okay. So as you see, this is a relatively concrete description of the what the Adams filtration is doing. Um, and uh, in particular, this connects the Adams spectral sequence to the Hopf invariant one problem. But before I say that, I will want to explain a little bit one technique to how to compute these X groups. So from now on, X equals Y equals uh, the sphere. The Adam spectral sequence is more general and it is sometimes useful in a more general setting. Uh, for example, to construct that map V1 I talked a, a month ago or so, um, you, you can apply the Adam spectral sequence for X equals Y equals S mod B. Um, and also some auxiliary spectra as well. Um, but today I'm going to concentrate on, on the case of maps from the sphere to the sphere. So that the spectral sequence, so we have a spectral sequence, HST, A, F2, F2, converging strongly to T minus S, the P completion. And okay, to compute X, the first naive idea is to find a projective resolution for F2. Turns out it's not a great idea because the projective resolution I'm about to write is like huge. But you can indeed write down a projective resolution and we'll try to use it to compute at least S equals zero and S equals one. I was really hoping to be able to do also X equals two, but turns out that no, that's already too much. Uh, you need to use other techniques. Um, and it's also converges to the two completion of, of the sphere, right? Oh yeah, sorry, if I have F2, yeah, okay, let's, let, let me also fix P equals two, you're right. Uh, 
it's not like I actually know the answers when P is out anyway. Um, and I, I kid, I, I know a little bit, but using the, the homology because the homology gets annoying, quite tricky, quite frequent, but okay. Sorry, yeah. Um, okay. So you have this F2 and you want to build a projective resolution. Uh, well, in fact, I'm going to build a, a free resolution. Why, why limit ourselves to projective? And so, well, what's the dumbest possible thing you can do? Well, you have a generator, which is one, and you can hit it with the free module of rank one. That's um, okay. And these as a kernel that I'm going to call a bar, which is just the augmentation ideal for this map of algebras. And so now I want to find another free module that subjects onto the kernel. Well, there is a canonical way of doing it, which is just taking the free module over this guy and, you know, mapping like this. But multiplication. We know it's a submodule because um, because it's the kernel of map of modules. Okay, <laughs> that was huge. And then you can go forward. It turns out that you can do this trick again by taking a tensor a bar twice, a tensor a bar three times, and so on and so forth. And here the map is not necessarily multiplication. Here the map you get uh, x tensor y tensor z. I think it has to be sent to x y minus uh, sorry x y tensor z minus uh, y tensor z x. I think you can the, the formulas are kind of annoying, but no, sorry, this has to be. Sorry, no, this has to be X tensor Y, Z. You have to preserve the ordering. And at every point you just multiply, you take the alternating sum. Um, to the alternating. Well, okay, I'm writing alternating, but this is characteristic too. So this sign is just here for show. Um, and then you, you just, you know, j i i plus one, you multiply two terms. And since it's an ideal, everything um, works out. So all these products that has to stay in the ideal are in the ideal. So this is called the bar resolution. And let's actually compute the x. So therefore, x is the cohomology of this complex. So you have 0, com a, a, f2, com a, uh, tensor a bar f2 over a home a tensor a bar square f2 and so on and in fact yeah uh, the, this complex here whose cohomology I'm, I'm computing is exactly the universal complex that came from the Adams resolution I gave you last time Remember, I gave you a complex whose cohomology was the E2 page. It turns out it, if you unravel it, it's exactly this complex. Uh, but, you know, these are, we can also write them like, like this. Home F2, A bar F2, home A tensor 2, 2, etc. Right? And this is called the bar complex. And that's the complex that computes 
uh, x. Uh, okay, the good thing is that when you unravel what everything means, this map is just a zero map. So we get a complete computation of the zero line. We have x zero uh, t a f2 f2 is f2 when t is zero and zero otherwise. Okay, as I say, this is just a home. So you could probably have done it without all this rigmarole, but you know, uh, that's good. Uh, but the good thing is that you can actually compute the x one also. So if you look at it, x one is exactly um, a module a bar modulo a bar square into f2 because um, well because uh, taking the dual is uh, is exact so this x1 is just the homology of the complex just like this and this is the multiplication map Okay, and what is this guy? This guy is known as the module of indecomposable. For A. And in fact, can be completely computed. Um, so, but let's try to understand what it is. And um, not going to do a complete computation, I will tell you the answer because it's just long with the Adams, um, you choosing suitable Adams, um, sorry, Adam relations to do the computation. Sorry, not tensor, uh, squared, I meant. So that's an ideal, it's the ideal module, the ideal square. So the idea is you take generators of the ideal and you kill off all the things that are sums of products of other elements of the ideal. So they are the elements that cannot be written as sums of products. So mod this is elements that cannot be written as sum a i b i for a i b i in the ideal. That's why they're called indecomposable. You cannot decompose them. Uh, as, as, as products of other elements. Okay. So, but we know a basis for A and thankfully a lot of elements of the basis uh, are decomposed. So remember, A bar had a basis of the form Q I zero S Q Y N, where you know we had this. Um, sorry, I J J plus one. We have this acceptability condition, and uh, most of them are obviously decomposable, right? So the only one that could be in the composable, i.e. not in uh, a bar square, are classes of the form square i. Okay, but even then, are not all in the composable. For example, and here I will just write you 
if you use the ADEM relation and you write square one, square two, you observe that this is just square three. This is an ADEM relation. And in fact, if you're clever, you can write all elements that are not of degree a power of two using a suitable ADEM relation. In fact, using a suitable ADEM relation, you can show uh, square i is in a bar square whenever i is not 2 to the j. And in fact, one can show that this is in the composable is uh, the sum square 2 to the j, j greater or equal than, one, uh, than 0, sorry. Well, class itself, if you want. Uh, this is not a complete proof. You have to do a bunch of stuff to show that there is such an indecomposable. Um, I mean that these guys are indeed indecomposable, but you can actually show that. And so again, the, the easiest way I can think of is using the, the help algebra structure here. So I'll skip that, but the point is that then that there, so let H, J be the dual basis of this. So the basis on the dual corresponding to this, uh, then X one star uh, F2, F2 A is the sum J greater or equal than zero H, J. And these hj's have degree, uh, well, one, two to the j. And okay, when you unravel the complex and everything, this corresponds to certain extensions and what extension do they correspond to? Well, they correspond to the extension like this. So the extension has to be like this. I just need to tell you what the, uh, module structure on the central term is. And this has an, uh, a module structure. No, oh, no, this color is no good. Sorry. A module structure such that, so let me call this basis element, sorry, X and Y. such that square two to the j of x is y. And all the other squares have to act like zero for degree reasons. And this actually gives you a modular structure exactly because you were in the composable, because think what would happen if you were try to do that for square three. We have the Adam relation here that tells you that square three is square one times square two. So if square three of x would be y, then y would be square one of square two of x, but square two of x is zero because there is nothing in that degree. So that cannot be, but for in the composable, it can happen. And in fact, these are the extensions corresponding to h and j. Okay, huh. questions about this? Okay, it turns out that if you're clever, X two A star F two F two can also be computed. And indeed it corresponds is uh, spanned by X 
at h i times h j. So extensions obtained by splicing two of these extensions. Uh, so higher extension obtained by splicing two of these extension together uh, for uh, j different than i uh, minus one or plus or minus one since it's commutative anyway. Uh, that's because it you get zero. It's not that that element doesn't exist, of course, uh, but I'm saying that you get zero when you do that product. So you actually have some understanding of this. And so let me draw the picture. So you have your, this class here. I don't know what to call it. It's just the, the class of the identity. And here you have h0 and the h0 square, h0 zero cubed, et cetera. You can see that h0 corresponds to the two adic filtration. Uh, again, and here the degrees are t minus s and s. Two adic filtration, then you get h1. And in fact, h1 goes on all the way here. Here we have h2. In t minus s is uh, three because h2 has by degree one comma four. And in fact, it turns out that h2 h0 square is exactly h1 cube. And then a little bit further, you get um, h3 and then even more further, you get h4, etc. And the two line is gets kind of a mess after a while, but you know. And you get this. Um, it is you have h zero square. You get this h three h zero, etc. This goes on. And these hjs are called Hopf invariant one elements because if you look at the definition of a Hopf invariant one map, it's exactly a map that corresponds to this extension in the Adams filtration. Um, so essentially the question of the Hopf invariant one element is which hjs are permanent cycles. And the solution of the Hopf invariant one problem given by Adams, the first solution, was complicated was via study of the Adam spectral sequence. The Adam spectral sequence was invented exactly to affect this problem. And he, in fact, he was able to construct differentials for all HJs for J greater or equal than, what do you need? I think five. You can actually differentials that have non-zero values. So they're not permanent cycles. So tough luck. Okay, but that's not the Hopf invariant one problem that I want to talk today. I want to talk about the Kerveri invariant one problem and give you just a small fragment of its solution. Unfortunately, I won't be able to give you the full solution. That would be a semester long course. I won't even be able to give you a, a full proof of the fragment I'm going to talk about, but I hope I will show you how you can connect uh, these apparently abstract uh, homotopy theory uh, techniques to solve uh, concrete differential geometry problems. So questions before I start talking about the Kerberi variant one problem and the two line of the Adam spectral sequence. No questions? Okay. Then let me draw a line. This all starts with what seems like a reasonable differential geometry question. And the question is the following. So let M be a two Q dimensional manifold. The case of odd dimensional manifolds is easier, so I'm going to ignore it. Um, Uh, sorry, not manifold, frame manifold. Remember, framed means that it has a trivialization of the stable normal bundle. 
So when is M cobordant to a sphere? So i.e. when there exists um, two Q plus one framed manifold with boundary W such that the boundary is M disjoint union some sphere. Um, where the sphere has some framing. I don't particularly care about what the framing is. So that is the question. And the answer is surprisingly, um, uh, when this happens, if and only if, uh, well, okay. Let's put Q greater or equal than two here, and uh, then three here. Sorry, um, the four manifolds are, are crazy. So I'm going to ignore the four manifold case. Um, and this happens if and only if Q is of the form two J minus one and H J square is a permanent cycle. Okay, what the hell? We started with a concrete question about manifolds and now we have a question about some differential on the Adam spectral sequence. It's a long road to go from A to B, but before, uh, before I go further, let me mention this important theorem by Hill, Hopkins and Ravenel, uh, which is I think that most recent theorem I'm going to talk about and I ever talked about in this class. Uh, so the, uh, let me check. Yeah, the, the published paper is in 2015. The first preprint was in 2009. So it's a 21st century mathematics really. Uh, so, Hj square is not a permanent cycle for j um, greater or equal than um, six. So we are talking about, uh, no, uh, seven. We are talking about, and then you no, know, uh, it is known that hj square is a permanent cycle for uh, j less or equal than five. This by direct computation. It's actually fairly easy to provide explicit manifolds until you get a j equals um, three. For j equals four, it's an easy computation with the Adam spectral sequence. Uh, and I'm not sure if they actually provide a manifold in that case, but they might have. And for j equals five is a hard computation with the Adam spectral sequence. And we definitely do not have a manifold, but we know it exists. Um, oh, sorry, this happened, this does not happen. Ooh, sorry, uh, this made no sense. I'm saying that, that there is a manifold that is not cobordant to a sphere, if and only if that happens. Sorry, I said that the exact opposite of what is true. Uh, Uh, so the answer is actually an existence of M. Yes, yes, yes. The answer is I can provide you an M which is not cobordant to the sphere. Because right. I mean, of course, I mean, you can take the sphere and that always gives you an, a manifold that is cobordant to the sphere because, well, it's a sphere. Yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> but then in the theorem, this HJ also depends on some M and I'm not in the no, 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 no. There is only one possible potential cobordism class that does not contain a sphere with some framing. And that is the class hit by this HJ square. That's the theorem, the, 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 the answer that I want to talk about today. I see, okay, so this HJ does not 
Okay, it's on, it only knows about spheres. It does not about know about any other manifolds. I mean, a priori. I mean, AJ squares is exactly the class of a manifold which is not a sphere, a homotopy sphere. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and in fact, you can Thanks. get also a statement yeah. for Q equals two. It's just more annoying because dimension four is cracking. But, um, but yeah. And obviously, J equals six is open, right? J equals six is open. Although, if you ask my personal opinion, and I'll claim this is my personal opinion, it is a permanent cycle for J equals six because the proof that Hill, Hopkins, and Ravenel use really, really does not work in dimension six. Uh, there is really no, no way of making it work there. And uh, uh, so it's probably like, there is probably some just some crappy manifold for low dimensional reasons. It's just the low dimension is 126 and we have no idea how to attack it, but we are getting close. Actually, very recent work uh, about computing the homotopy groups of spheres uh, is getting really, really close. I think they need only a couple more information about the Adam spectral sequence before deducing uh, whether it is a, a boundary a permanent cycle or not. Uh, I think we are probably going to hear it in the, in the next few years. Uh, but I mean, this is actually the main driver for all these hard computations of the homotopy groups of spheres. It's not like you, you hope to find a pattern, but people just want to settle this case of 126 dimensional manifolds because it's just annoying to have it like that hanging around just outside of our computational power. Uh, But okay, but it might or might not be a permanent cycle. I mean, we, we, we don't know right now. My personal opinion is that there just there is some crappy manifold around, but I uh, cannot be sure. Okay. Okay, let's start bridging the gap between geometric topology and, uh, so recall, Bordism classes of frame manifolds are the homotopy groups of the Tom spectrum of, well, the, the trivial map from the point to be home i.e. they are just the homotopy groups of the spheres. Because the Tom spectrum of, you know, the point is the sphere by definition. So this is suddenly starts to make a bit more sense that the Adam spectral sequence will show up because it's our best tool to understand the homotopy groups of spheres. And in fact, what I hope to get today is to prove that if you have a manifold which is not cobordant to a sphere, it lives at least in Adam's filtration. Sorry. It, does, it cannot live in Adam's filtration three. So um, this already tells us that it is on the two line. Uh, the computation that it, it has to be exactly HJ square is slightly more tricky, but we'll see how much I can get to do today. Now, there is the following theorem by Kerver and Milner. And this is, uh, let's see if I can get even the date. I have the paper here open. It's 63. So the, I think there was an earlier preprint, but it doesn't matter. And this tells you that there exists a group homomorphism C from by lower star the sphere to which actually they, they see as Bordism groups of frame manifolds. They don't think in terms of spheres. So actually maybe I should should use their notation to uh, the Z mod two, such that a manifold, a two Q manifold, sorry, two Q, a two Q manifold, frame manifold, 
is bordered to a sphere if and only if c of m is one. So there is an explicit obstruction. And this is called, by the way, this, this element here is called a curvary invariant one. Curvary invariant, sorry. Or a manifold. So that's why this is called the curvary invariant one problem. You need to find a manifold uh, whose curvary invariant is one. Okay. And I won't give you the proof of this theorem, but it's fairly concrete. You can read the paper by Kerber and Milner. It's a famous paper. It's quite readable. Um, it does. It works by surgery theory. You you start with a manifold with, and then you 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 do board distance on it. You do surgery on it but until you ensure that it has only homology in degree zero to Q and Q. And then if you want to play the same game and ensure that uh, also the Qth homology vanishes. You, you find that there is an obstruction that is this Kerber invariant. And then it has the homology of a sphere. And then since the dimension is at least uh, two, it's at least, four, it's at least five, sorry, um, there, there is no problem. It's homeomorphic to a sphere. It's not diffeomorphic to a sphere. It might be an exotic sphere. But it is homeomorphic to a sphere, which is all that we care. And in fact, they use the user to actually give a list of all uh, uh, exotic spheres. You can, you, they can, when the Kerberian, when there is not a manifold of Kerberian invariant one, you can see that uh, the, the, the group, the exotic spheres are in bijection with the co-kernel of the image of J. Since you can see that elements in the image of J here corresponds to standard spheres with a weird framing. And then you, you can play. This is a nice paper, but I'm not going to be able to say more about it. I want to move forward. And to move forward, I need to define a class. So now we are going to present a proof by Browder plus simplifications by Brown connecting uh, this C to H J square. Okay, questions about it? Okay, so I'm going to present the, the simplification by Brown here um, uh, because Browder did a more complicated argument to arrive at the lemma I'll, I'll state, but I prefer, well, okay. I prefer, so there exists a class VN in H, oh geez, I think H, yeah, HN. B O F two uh, with the property that for every manifold M um, what do you want to say? Yeah, let me say it like this. So we have this pairing here for any X and Y classes in complementary cohomology dimension. And no, sorry, actually, let me write like this, such that uh, V N of X is Poincaré dual to square n of x uh, when x is in the right dimension. Uh, 
it's not very important. Uh, the important part is that this class Vn is actually, uh, Vn can be defined as follows. In HNMO F2, we have Vn theta. Remember, this was um, a free module over, over H star BO. This is the same of SQN bar theta, where SQN bar in the Steenrod algebra is defined inductively as um, SQ0 bar is just SQ0, while there are no other elements to be chosen. And the sum SQI bar SQJ for I plus J is N is equal to zero for n greater than zero. So you can see from these, you can, you can inductively reconstruct. These are called the VU classes. And in particular, they give a map EO to K F to M. So we have these cohomology classes. I think I gave you a complete definition now. Yes. So this should not uh, be too much of a problem. So, okay. So let's define B O brackets VN be the homotopy fiber of VN. So it's the universal uh, uh, bundle where Vn is, is, is zero, or rather with a trivialization of Vn for that bundle. Vn is some characteristic class of a bundle, of a virtual vector bundle. And let Brn be the Tom spectrum. of um, V O V N going to V O. So it's homotopy groups are manifolds. Remember the homotopy groups B and B R N uh, B R B R oof. Bordism classes of the manifolds with a null homotopy. Um, M goes B O minus T M goes V M. So they have a trivialization of the nth VU class of the minus the tangent bundle. Okay, now I'm going to put the theorem by Brown here, uh, which unfortunately I won't have time to prove, but. Um, there exists a map C from pi to Q brow, browder Q plus one to Z mod eight, making the diagram commute. So here we have the curve variant to Z mod two. These maps canonically to this Q plus one browser spectrum. And this goes to Z mod eight. And this is just multiplication by four. In particular, and that's the, the result that browser proved with a little more uh, uh, a little bit, a little more. Uh, trick. Every class in the kernel of pi two q sphere to pi two q browder q plus one has curvary invariant one, curvary invariant zero. 
And this is all still very manifold. I mean, I don't have the time to, to give you this construction, but essentially the idea is you look at the definition that Kerber and Milner gave for this Kerber invariant and look at what's the minimal possible structure on your manifold you need to, to, to repeat this, uh, this construction. And now the idea of Brown is, okay, but what if we didn't have it have values in Z mod two, but rather Z mod eight, and these become slot cleaner. Um, uh, well, Browder gave a more complicated argument by constructing a, an invariant valid in Z mod two, but this wasn't completely independent of the manifold. So you have to, to, to do some, some magic. To, to deduce the final statement. Okay. So our goal now is to understand the homotopy type of this Tom spectrum and show that this kernel is big indeed. One word of warning and now we have paid the price that our Tom spectrum here does depend on the Q. This is not a uniform statement in Q. We have, well, the Kerber invariant was defined for all degrees of manifolds. It's even defined in odd degrees. If you want, it's just zero in odd degrees, always. Um, the, this, now, the, this guy uh, depends on the Q. And okay, actually that's not at all how Brown stated the theorem because of course he had the explicit construction written down in terms of quadratic refinements of the intersection pairing and et cetera. But uh, these I think will suffice for today. Okay, and now we get to actually <laughs> how to do things. So, Okay, so now the goal is to study the image of this vertical map here, or rather the kernel. Note that we can go here, we can go to browser Q plus one. You can go further to MO, of course. And the first observation is that every uh, class in positive degree here dies in MO. That's because MO is just a, uh, a sum of McLean spectra and you can see that only the degree zero can be seen. So uh, we can start to lift up these to the fiber which I'm going to call browser one. So remember. Oh, and this, the theorem is false for Q plus zero and it's, here is exactly where it fails. Uh, the, the, the pi zero actually survives to MO. But uh, yeah, of course, I mean, low, low dimensions, weird things happen, this, this we know. So we can consider this homotopy fiber. And now the trick is we want to understand this homotopy fiber a little bit better. And here the, the statement comes. And let me actually give you the full precise statement even if I don't think we're going to use all of it. So, okay, this theorem, there exists a map from browser Q plus one, one to sigma minus one, sigma infinity K F Q Q plus one tensor M O, which is an ISO on cohomology with coefficients in F two uh, for star less or equal than two Q and whose kernel in star equals to two Q plus one is uh, cyclic of order two. Uh, 
that is. It's just a one dimension subspace generated by a class um, whose image in um, now we can project MO to F2. And so we can take its image in, um, well, it's done in image to 2q plus 2 of k fq q plus 1 is square q plus 1 of the fundamental class. Iota here is just a fundamental class. F2 generator. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Um, you know, I don't, not sure if I'd be able to prove this whole thing. So let me tell you how we use it to at least show that nothing lies in in in, Kerver, in, in Adam's filtration three. Okay. Is the statement of this theorem clear? We have this map that has a particularly nice behavior on cohomology. And secretly, what we are doing is we are actually trying to compute a fragment of the Adam spectral sequence for VR Q plus one and see that uh, all the elements in the, in the one line go to zero, except from HJ square, which go to something. That's essentially what we are morally doing, although that's not the language we are using here. So let me go back here. So we have BRQ plus one going to MO. And this has fiber BRQ plus one, one. And these maps to these sigma minus one, sigma infinity K FQ, Q plus one tensor MO. And these as a fiber BR, that I'm going to call BRQ plus one, two. And then you can see that uh, this guy has no homology below degree um, 2q and in 2q you get an f2 by the, the statement of using the long exact sequence and therefore you can just get a map here. Again, this is not quite an Adams resolution because uh, it is these maps, these vertical maps are not surjection on homology, but they are surjections in low enough degree. That's what I mean when we are computing just a fragment of what's going on. Okay, here we have the sphere and here we have our nice curvature class that we want to study. So the first thing is, okay, this guy is, is in degree 2q. 4q, let's say, greater than, I don't know, 4, I don't know, q, q greater than 2. Anyway, uh, it's certainly greater than 0, so it cannot be in Adam's filtration 0, because we have seen that in Adam's filtration 0, there is only classes in degree 0. Uh, moreover, it cannot be in Adam's filtration 1, because we have seen that all the classes in Adam's filtration one are in degree two to the J minus one. So in odd degree. So this guy has to be at least in Adam's filtration two. Moreover, these guys are just wedges, uh, sorry, sums of H of twos. Because remember, these are all, you know, well, the. MO is a wedge of, is a, is a sum of H of twos because we proved it, or at least we gave a sketch of the proof. And the second guy is just HF, a bunch of H of twos tensor something. And we have seen that those two are also sums of H of twos. So what this boils down to is, okay, this class, which is in Adam's filtration two, certainly lives here because it's zero on, on cohomology, since it's an Adam's filtration at least one. But moreover, this map is also zero on cohomology. On, on cohomology. 
because it's in Adam's filtration too. So it lifts further here. And now you see that, that the importance that this guy has uh, nothing, as a, only a Z about two in degree two, and nothing in degree two Q, and nothing else. So now the point is, if this map were in Adams filtration three, it would lift also to the fiber. But this fiber, we have seen this has nothing. So this is 2Q connected. So, whoops, uh, <laughs> that would be zero. And uh, well, if that map were zero, then in particular, the map to BRQ plus one were zero. And so the manifold would have a covariant variant one, a covariant variant zero. So if, so let me call this alpha. Alpha is in Adam's filtration three, it lifts to BR three Q plus one. It is uh, zero. So uh, care variant invariant is zero. So as you see, we have already cut out a huge swath of the Adam spectral sequence just by looking at this guy. And moreover, the fact that here there is only one HF2 suggests that there is only one possible class that can. Um, yeah. Okay. Is this argument clear? I'm slightly confused about this part where you use the filtration on Adam sequence to, uh, sorry, the second filtration to lift twice. Um, yeah, I so mean, the point is if I have a map, sorry, suppose you have a map like this. So these are just a bunch of HFP twos. Uh, these mm -hmm. take the fiber, they another bunch of HF twos. And these take the fiber again. Mm -hmm. Suppose you have a map that's in Adams filtration two. What does it mean? Uh, it means that it factors as two things. So, so this guy, you can choose a lift. Okay, I, I would be precise. It's not true that every lift lifts further, but you can choose a lift that lifts further because now this map is also zero on homology. Oh, I see, okay. And so, you okay. Further. And so if further and further in Adams filtration, so if you're in Adams filtration three, you can lift yeah. three times. Now it works, thanks. So, wow. Okay, what can I do in 15 minutes? Not much. Um, so let me say a couple more words about perhaps, so the construction of this map is very geometric. Um, I'm not sure I want to say all the details, but yeah, let me not say the details. Uh, the construction of this map is, is uh, essentially these, you can see these as the Tom spectrum of, well, okay, as a fiber, okay. Well, this is the D suspension. No, it's not the D suspension. Yeah, okay. Anyway, it's related to the Tom spectrum of this guy. And the way you do this is essentially by constructing something like a map like this, only that's not literally true. You have to massage it a little bit, but. And you use the Tom isomorphism to check that the behavior on, on cohomology is the one you want before you Tomify. And then the Tom isomorphism uh, will ensure that the Tomification also has the required behavior on cohomology. And it's more complicated than that actually, but uh, well, I'll, I think, uh, in 15 minutes, I could explain it, but I want to say maybe a tiny bit more words on how you identify this mystery class that could have covariant variant one. And the point is you have border maps like this of degree one, so maps to the suspension of the target. That's what I mean with this little dash over the thing. These are degree one maps. And this composition here is zero. 
because well because we are doing a, a fiber sequence twice uh, two two sorry two maps in a fiber sequence in a row and the trick is to identify what these maps is so let me call these maps x so the lemma here is that x which is a map in h um, 2q plus 1 sorry no 2q plus 2 of mo tensor sigma infinity kfq q plus 1 we have this map here this has a formula <laughs> and I'll write it to you in all its beauty. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm writing it in the other direction. You know what? Yeah. Let me not try to do this. If I try to change the, the order of the pro the tensor product in the formula, I'm going to get lost. So, okay, it is iota tensor theta. So remember, this is just in, by the cuneate isomorphism is in the tensor product of these guys. Theta plus iota tensor VQ plus one theta plus the sum for zero less than one less than no no it cannot be zero uh did i did i copy this wrong sorry one second i check on the pa on the original paper because no, 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 it's right. Um, square I of iota tensor ah, W um, Q plus one minus I theta. Okay, so that's the class. And now you might ask, okay, what the hell? How do you even compute such a thing? Well, I actually told you all that you need to know to compute it secretly because I told you that this class is the generator This class is the generator of the kernel of the map from H2 plus Q of this guy to H2 Q plus, well, one of BRQ plus one, one. And, uh, in fact, you can restrict to sigma infinity k f q q plus one. You see that all these terms here disappear and you get square q plus one iota, which is non zero. So this x is non zero. So if you show that it is in the kernel, it has to be the generator because the kernel has only two elements, a zero and a non zero element. And now you just, you know, uh, unravel the definition of the map I, I said in the theorem and look at, at the computation. And it's not actually that hard. Here I'm using uh, the formula that I said last week that this is square Q plus one minus one theta secretly. So the, this piece here is, uh, this piece here is just square Q plus one iota plus theta minus terms and etc. And you, you just do some computation and you get this result. Um, okay. Okay, so we have a description of this map X. And okay, this map here is a bit mysterious, but uh, we can say something about the degree of the classes that appear there. 
And I'm going to claim that, you know, these, this Elmer McLean space here, KFQ Q plus one is certainly Q plus one connected. Sorry, Q connected. No, uh, yeah, Q connected. So uh, if you look at the copy of F2 sitting here in degree zero, all the compositions here are in degree at least Q plus one. So it boils down that you can write, remember these, I'm seeing these as, as sums of HFPs. And uh, the composition here has to be in degree at most Q plus one. So, and here I am sweeping a, swapping a little bit of things, but if you have a class that's represented by H I H J in the Adam spectral sequence, you can try to evaluate on the, this is not a resolution, but this is a partial resolution, so to speak, uh, of, of BR Q plus one that corresponds to this. You can try to evaluate this class X to the class coming from this piece. And for degree reasons, H i and H j will, will eat up one piece coming from this sequence and one piece from this sequence. So the only possible way it cannot be zero is that when j equals k. So this is a bit vague. So let me be maybe a bit more precise. So I want to identify uh, which classes in the homotopy of S can compose to something non-zero here. Now these, if I go uh, this way, sorry, this way, this uh, gives me a sequence, pi two Q sphere goes to pi two Q M O goes to pi two Q, uh, minus one MO tensor sigma infinity KF two Q plus one. This goes to, no wait. Am I doing it right? Yeah. Okay, I'm screwing up the, 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 the degrees here somehow. Uh, um, let me say by star. So I don't have to worry too much about the degrees. And this is, you would like to say this is not, this is a resolution, but this is not a resolution. This is sort of a partial resolution. You have to add pieces here to, to get it into a resolution. But the point is that all these pieces are in, in high enough degree because we ensure that our maps are isos on cohomology, uh, sorry, our subjections on cohomology up to degree 2q. And so you can try to see, and remember this is, this resolution here is exactly the resolution that computed uh, the, the E2 term of the Adam spectral sequence. So you can try to see, okay, which classes is represented by the, 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 the identity class here. And uh, here you have to play a little bit with the cobar construction, but the point is, mm, this class here, uh, what do you want to say? Yeah, the point is that this is right. Remember, this was home uh, from some free module into into F two, where because this is just a sum of H F twos over A, and this is also home from some other free module F prime into F two. I don't want to. To be super precise here, 
and this is home, and we know what the free module here is, it's just A. Because that's just an HF2. And we want to take, I don't know, for example, the classes of the COBAR resolution. We, we can want to identify this as the, uh, as the classes represented by the COBAR resolution. So you just, Um, can construct a comparison to the Cuba resolution like this. Sorry, no. Uh, this is just a partial resolution. So you get a, a map in this direction. And you want to see the image of HIHJ here. And uh, sorry, here I'm being terribly vague, but the point is that if I, H, I, and H, J, this is a multiplicative uh, resolution. The point is if H, I, and H, J do not have the same degree, uh, one of them under this map is going to be sent to zero because it will eat a term that it's in degree um, too small for him or too big for him. And so H, I, H, J cannot detect this class. And then you can show that hj square actually can detect this class when it's in the right degree using this explicit formula. But I really don't want to do this, this proof. And um, sorry, this last argument was a bit vague. I hope at least the proof that it was in, in the filtration degree three, sorry, that it was in filtration degree less than three um, was clear. Yes, I think that's all I want to say about this proof. Uh, but you can see we have we started with manifolds and asked a very concrete geometric question: What are are these manifolds coordinate to spheres? And in the end, we reduced it to a, some differentials in the stereo in in the Adam spectral sequence. And then the the argument that the the fun part is that the proof of Hill, Hopkins, and Ravenel uh, takes an even more circuitous approach. It goes uh, through, first you go use chromatic homotopy theory to reduce it to a different statement. And then you prove that different statement using equivariant homotopy group theory for the group C8, which you say, what the hell, why, why is C8 appearing? And it's, 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 it's very magic. And this is a very beautiful story. But as I said, this whole thing done properly would take a whole, a whole semester. Still, I wanted to share to you in this last class to show you that this is not completely abstract and, and pointless. We have concrete answers. So, okay. Last questions? No. Okay, I think I'll stop the recording now.